Rosh's mean after Twadley. The project undertaken by the group The Grey Geese was to design a reservoir to supply the UL campus with grey water. The design limitation for the pond was the berm had a maximum height of 5 metres. Financial resources were available for a membrane if necessary. On the 14th of February, we conduct conducted a site investigation with an excavation of a trial pit. We took soil samples of two types of soil, a clay and a granular soil. We logged our trial pit results recording the description of the soils and depths and created a cross section of the site profile using other group results from the other two trial pits. Following precedent, our next task was to classify the soil using experiments. We devised a project plan on Microsoft Project to plan our critical path and keep us online over the seven week project. This slide shows the history of the given site. In the historical maps, it shows signs reading liable to flood. We believe this was previous to the canal being constructed, so these implications are no longer a problem. We logged our trial pit and compared it with that of the other two groups to get a full understanding of the soil profile throughout the site. The experiments we carried out are as follows. The clay soil had a natural moisture content of 36.6%. The granular soil had a natural moisture content of 32.6%. Using the sieve test, platicity limits test and liquid limits test, we discovered from the sieve test that the clay had a fines content of 70%. The activity of the soil was 0.28. From this, we determined that muscovity was the primary mineral. The liquid index of the soil was 0.4155, indicating it was in a plastic state. The granular soil had a fines content of 5%. We concluded that the granular soil was unsuitable for berm construction and decided to concentrate our engineering focus on the clay soil. In order to fully classify the soil, we needed to determine the plasticity limits and liquid limits. The clay had a plastic limit of 28.5%. The clay had a liquid limit of 48%. From these results, we were able to determine that the soil fell above the Attenberg limits and we could classify the soil as a clay of intermediate plasticity. We then started experiments to determine the soil strength, compactionability and permeability properties. The Proctor test was the next test we did to determine the soil's optimum moisture content and maximum density. We concluded that the results we'd obtained were inaccurate, so we decided to use another group's results. They were with a moisture content of 28.5%. The soil had a maximum density of 1,890 kilograms per meter cubed. The soil had a permeability or K value of 2.5 by 10 to the minus 5. In the MCV test, after 20 blows, the soil reached optimum compaction and 70 millimeters penetration had occurred. Following the linear shrinkage test, we gathered the results to be unnecessary due to Ireland's climate we believe shrinkage would not be an issue. The construction material for the berm is to be the clay located on slide. The clay is to be compacted at every 200 millimetres using a sheep's foot roller. In the year 2009, the UL water consumption was 171,252 metres cubed. The, the grey water pond designed is allocation for 50% of this water needed. 
This is 85,626 metres cubed of water per year, which is 1,646.65 metres cubed per week. The volume of the Grey Water Pond is 8,100 metres cubed, which means it can hold up to four weeks of water for the UL campus. We calculated that on average 0.1.4 metres cubed of water travels through and under the berm on a daily basis. This is very little seepage which proves to be a very positive characteristic of the clay provided. These slides show the calculations that were carried out to obtain these results. This diagram shows the design which our group decided to choose. The sides of the berm have a slope ratio of 2 is to 1. It'll be made from the, from the clay material found on site. This material is almost fully impermeable, so we opted not to use a membrane. See, I'll leave with every piece of you. 